Intensity is like medicine. It's not which is best, it's which is most suitable for you. If you're a baby, you're on the Tixie Licks. If you're an adult, you're glugging down the Beecham's Moonshine. <laughs> Intensity exists on a spectrum. At one end you have low intensity, lit, and at the other end you have high intensity, hit. It's like a volume button, and all the activities I can think of have a low to high intensity version. The fitness industry sells hit and lit like they're second hand cars, focusing on their features. This one saves time, this one helps you clear your head, this one burns more fat. But suitability is more important than features. A 4 litre V8 Interceptor with a blower on the hood is a great car, but maybe not suitable for the school run. So when considering the best intensity to train at to get into great shape, ignore the shiny trim and decide which is the right one for you practically. Let's start with a low intensity fat burning or aerobic char. As a self-contained char, it goes from 1 to 100%. Features of this spectrum are that up to 50% you can continue for vast periods of time, multiple hours. The limiting factors become sleep and hydration, not fuel, because fat provides practically all the fuel and there's enough of that on most people. As you go above 50%, you start to use greater amounts of sugar as fuel and you need to incorporate short rest intervals, hence interval training. You'll also start to build up ever greater amounts of searing H plus ions in the blood known as blood lactate. Over 70% you can maintain that intensity for about 30 minutes and at 80 to 85% you can maintain that for 3 to 5 minutes before the boiling feeling in your blood stops you. This is a spectrum that any sport with a continual long duration will be familiar with. So Tour de France, marathons, long distance swimming, cross country skiing etc. Then there's the high intensity anaerobic glycolytic and creatine phosphate spectrum. This takes the last 50% of the aerobic spectrum and further subdivides it. Working backwards from 100%, 1 to arguably 6 to 12 seconds, depending on who you are, is maximum effort. This is the eyeballs out, but no suffering. Hence, A meaning without lactic. It uses the phosphate from creatine phosphate as the fuel and that's why some people are snorting creatine monohydrate, because it's the Knight Rider's equivalent of Turbo Boost. After about 12 seconds, you exhaust creatine stores, so now you're using sugar conveniently stored in the muscles as glycogen. Sugar lasts a lot longer than creatine, maybe 60 minutes at 70% intensity for the elite, as we've got around about 400 calories in our muscles. But it produces an unpleasant byproduct, those H plus ions again. Think of a smoky wood fire. It keeps you warm, but you're going to choke to death if you don't ventilate the room, hence why we breathe hard. From 15 to 75 seconds, sugar is the exclusive fuel for the activity. After that, like graphic equalizers, the sugar to fat ratio varies. Both systems are in use, it's just the amount of fuel you get differs from person to person and study to study it seems, and that is where the confusion starts. If you ask the sugar daddies how long sugar is key, they'll tell you as long as up to 80 minutes. If you ask the fat chaps when does fat become predominant, they'll tell you after 3 minutes. And that's a huge difference. You can see why hit guys think this is the best way to train. If sugar can be used for so long and the burn rate so much higher, then use it to expend the calories faster, improve the musculature, and the CV capacity. Then when you finish, your body, like a quartermaster, keeps what it thinks is most essential. Right lads, gotta be prepared in case he does that again, so car, check, replenishment, protein, check, repair, fat, mm, not so much. Bin it. They call this the afterburn effect. But the low intensity crew think, hey, the fat's predominantly used after three minutes, and that's coming right off the source. So, any time invested in low intensity is literally melting the fat away. And whilst the burn rate is slower, you don't need to rest. This is classic tortoise and hare, and we all know who won that race. The more time you invest in it, the more you can melt away, because you can do multiple hours of it. You can hypertrophy your slow twitch fibres and increase your CV efficiency. And these two polar concepts have also spawned the hit and lit spin-offs that now also populate the fitness industry. Hit with lit breaks, lit with hit sprinkles, 
Every version claimed to be the most effective, and every version seeing the flaw in all the others to differentiate themselves. And I can see why all these ideas are super attractive, but here's a thought, they're all right. And not because of science, true pseudo or bro, but because of the variation in people and diets mean that some will naturally gravitate towards low intensity, others to high intensity, and yet others to hybrids. A low carb dieter will naturally choose the low intensity chart. A high carb dieter will naturally feel more at home in the anaerobic chart. And if you have a medium carb to fat diet, you feel happy with the hybrid system. But here's the awesomeness of the human body. There are also guys on low carb doing anaerobic hit and guys on high carb doing low intensity aerobic training and guys eating really very little at all doing hybrid training and they're all successful because the body is an adaptation machine and the more you practice and dedicate to something the better the adaptation as long as you can cope with it so whatever you do as long as you do it excellently you'll be excellent that's why it's less about who's best east side versus west side because they're both making great music and more about which flavor is most suitable for you at the time, taking into account factors like your diet, biomechanics, types of exercise, experience level, and your muscle fiber type. Next video, I'll go into the different types of people from a mental and physical perspective and discuss which types of gang colors they should be wearing. Be like a judge and bang your gavel on the like button and beats aside, please subscribe. Woo! Woo!